to members of the board who are present, families and friends, President Chop, thank you for your wonderful and gracious introduction. Mom, I don't know where you are. <laughs> the coolest commencement marshal. <laughs> but most importantly, to the best class to have hit the college in a very long time, the class of 20X. I want to begin by thanking the people who made this day possible for us graduates. If it were not for them, we literally would not be here today getting ready to receive our diplomas. They have passed on their knowledge, their intellect, and their skills to us. And for that, I would like to personally thank our swimming instructors for making this day possible. <laughs> I also wanna thank the professors for forcing us to think and for challenging us. I'll admit it was hard, it was tough. And forget what the websites say, take it from me, it was grueling. But I have something to say. Yesterday, Diane Anderson talked about the importance of writing letters to yourself, of writing love letters to encourage yourself. So I was inspired, Diane. I wanted to read a brief letter I wrote to the class of 20X before I started this speech. It was inspired by one of my favorite movies, and after this week, an appropriate movie for this occasion, and a movie that probably describes the experiences of some of my classmates today, The Hangover. Hello. How about that walk in? I guess that's why they call it a processional. <laughs> you guys might not know this, but I considered myself a bit of a loner. I tend to think of myself as a one man wolf pack. But when I came to this campus and met all 365 of you, I thought, wait a second, could it be? And now I know for sure, I just added 365 more of you guys to my wolf pack. All of us wolves running around SWAT together, searching for knowledge and stimulation, intellectual stimulation that is. So I thank you 20X for making me part of your wolf pack. Yeah. So today I've been tasked by my class to somehow capture the past four years in 10 minutes or less. As I spent the past few weeks thinking, I realized what a difficult assignment this would be. How do I find the words to describe such an interesting group of diverse people with whom I have come to know so well while also trying to inspire you to greatness? Initially, I wanted to discuss our role in creating innovation at the college and in the world of using our education to become Swarthmorean world citizens. I would have then moved on to discuss how our education has enabled us to change the world how we must work hard to create a culture of perpetual learning, and how our education will help us to take down the current social order. But then I realized, President Chop, that on your very first commencement, it would be inappropriate for me to steal your speech. So I'll do that to you. I'll do that to you. Then I thought, maybe I could capture our experiences not in words, but in song. I can't believe it that we're leaving this place. Oh yeah, class of 2010. Oh, 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 the class of 2010. I want my diploma. I want my diploma. So then as I began to think about what I would say, because I'm not singing, I immediately thought about our honorary degree recipients and realized how I could attempt to capture our experiences here. Before coming to Swarthmore, I always wanted to be a movie writer. So I thought it would be appropriate, given that you were part of this movie, Mr. Lang, I would tell our story through the plot of Avatar. Now, Mr. Lang, if you like this storyline, as an unemployed senior, it would help me to let me know. <laughs> because this can be worth lots of money. Well, that is, 
unless you decide to sell it back to the college bookstore. Now, when thinking about the title, hey, hey, hey come on. When thinking about the title, I thought Swabatar would be perfect. But then I spoke to a professor and she said, that was too easy. You are Swarthmore students. Nothing is easy. We must challenge ourselves. So because of her, the new title of my movie will be Swabatar, the retelling of Avatar utilizing an epistemological interpretationist approach. <laughs> I'm going to tell the story of a people, of an intellectual and quirky people, that's us, and their experiences in a distant land where apparently everyone and their parents are worthwhile people. <laughs> I will take excerpts from Avatar that do a good job of telling the story as we experience it here at Swarthmore. So in a faraway land, there existed the Swabi people, and interesting people to say the least. The Swabi people were known throughout all the other worlds for their uniqueness. In our land, for example, you are considered one of us only if you have used any of the following terms. Problematic, <laughs> queer, hegemonic, paradigm, heteronormative, gendered, modernist, Hegelian, complicate, ossify, pedagogy, or my favorite, green. <laughs> now, in our land, due dates take on a completely new meaning than they traditionally would in other worlds. A due date in the Suave land means turn it in when it feels done. But most importantly, we know that in our land, a C is an A anywhere else. <laughs> well, except Morehouse College, President Franklin. <laughs> except Morehouse. We even speak in acronyms. Consider the following sentence, which sounds normal, but because of our use of acronyms at the college, it can take on a completely new meaning. A smart wizard and ninja through darts at the RAs and Sams, forcing them to cry, wah. <laughs> the Swabi were also divided into villages. There was the disciplined village of the humanities, the village of the social sciences, one that seemed contradictory. There were the strong villages of the sciences. And after yesterday's rehearsal, the spoiled villages of the engineers, I love you guys, though. <laughs> there also existed the most self-righteous, I call them the pain lovers, is the honors village. We were one people. For four years, we lived together. We ate together. We slept together. And we moaned together. As I roamed this land, I began to look for our Captain Jake Sully, the main character of our land, our knight in shining armor, our savior, the one who would lead our people to preserve our land. And after much thinking interacting, and interacting with others, I realized that we were all Jake Sully. We were all brave, strong, excited, and passionate. We were also stressed, broken, confused. Most importantly, we were in love with our land. So at Swarthmore, I've been led by all of you. Thank you for living with me, eating with me, sleeping with me, <laughs> and moaning with me. Now, I don't have much time to talk about the villains in the movie. Oh, God. But the villains in the R movie would be the Abu Dubites. <laughs> who struck us not one time or twice, but three times, even abducting our former leader and forcing him to send us messages through, of all people, Miley Cyrus. <laughs> so now to you, my Swabi people, to the class of 2010, we stand at the border of our Suave land, of our Pandora, staring out into the future. As many generations have done before us, we will leave our world to change others. We will use our knowledge and intellect to change the world of poverty, war, and disease. I do want to conclude by saying this. In the course of my lifetime, I have given thousands of graduation speeches. But this seems to be one of the most difficult for me. Believe it or not, there are no words today that can capture the significance of our achievements here or the weight of our accomplishments. But if there is something I can leave you with is this. Our generation is living in the most exciting time in human history. 
We are living in a period marked by increasing inequality and instability in our world. But what makes this time such an exciting one, however, is not just the fact that we will have to address these issues, but that we have the knowledge to do so. That's why there's so much excitement, not just at Swarthmore, but at schools all over the country about finishing up and entering the real world. So at Swarthmore, we have been equipped in unique ways and by unique people, from professors to EVS, dining services and administrative staff, to address the problems in this increasingly unstable world, whether it be through teaching, through the arts, or volunteering. As a Haitian Suave, I was so pleased to learn that a few of my classmates will be heading to Haiti to volunteer in orphanages after graduating. That has been the spirit of our class at Swarthmore, a spirit of giving unto others and of putting others above self. So the, to the class of 20X, it's closing time. <laughs> I wish you all the best as you move on to the next stages of your life. There's gonna be two trash cans at the top. Please throw your swaggles in them. You won't need them anymore. <laughs> I congratulate you all on such a wonderful job well done. And remember, now that you have gotten through Swarthmore, you can go just about anywhere you imagine. Congratulations, 20X.